Hello everybody, this is Bill McFadden from Tone Pure Music. And to get started, I just wanted to let you know that there will be an MP3, a PDF of the chords that you will see, and also a MIDI file so you can import the MIDI file into your own DAW and assign pianos or strings to the chords you'll see in this video. You'll find a link to the download below the description of this video. And just as a point of clarification, if I play this triad, it's, it's a C triad in root position. It's a closed triad. This is your first, second, third, fourth, and fifth notes of the C scale. And the chord consists of the first, the third, and the fifth. If we continue on, we get the 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10th of the C scale. And if you take the 1st, 5th, and the 10th, you get the voicings we'll be primarily using in this video. So there you have the 1st, 5th, and 10th for the C chord, 1st, 5th, and 10th for the D minor chord. In closed position, you would get that, and so on. So, just wanted to get that out of the way, and here we go. So, when writing for strings and arranging for strings, it's necessary, well, let's not say necessary, but let's say recommended that you have a harmonic overview that you're looking at. So, in this case, we have the F chord, then we go to a G, then in measure one, we're at A minor, and we're voicing it in tenths, a great way to voice uh, strings and sometimes brass. Then in measure two, we go from A minor and then G with the B in the bass, then back to C, then C to D minor, back to the G with the B in the bass, C, A minor, and then G in the bass for the E minor and F. So what I've done is I basically used the same hand positions in most of the chords. If you start down at C and work your way up to D, Here's the only place you really need to change it to make it sound pleasing, and then back to C. So that's a great exercise. And then once you become more familiar with the different chords, then you can do not only the white keys, but you can start playing some of the black keys as well. So let's, uh, and then after you have your chordal bass, then you can start your solo, depending on which key you're in. And in this case, we're actually in the Aeolian mode in the key of A, the natural minor. So we can use any of the white keys and they will fit most of the time, but usually on your downbeats, you want a note of the chord in question. For example, uh, if we just play the sequence starting with F, so notice the F chord, if we throw in a solo instrument, we could start, if you want to start with any note in the, on the chord itself, So we did the, the third of the F chord, the third of the G chord, and the third of the A chord for that particular phrase. So going back to that. And then I threw in which is actually the first three notes in the A minor natural scale. And then measure two. So 
So the G and then a passing tone for the C. So in the E minor, there in the third beat of measure six. So here we have the two notes of the E chord. We didn't play the G, but we could have. So you have a lot of variation in the notes you can use. So this is a great scale to work with when you just start out uh, learning how to voice strings, and you can use those hand positions for the tense. Whoops, I think we better get into a, a string patch here. And then after a while, in addition to just doing the notes of the chord, you can do things like So what I did there is I did the fourth or suspended. So you can add those in each of the chords to add more interest. Now that didn't sound too good right there. The the two, the four sounds fine. But there we need to go to the F sharp so it sounds pleasing. And so part of what gives you a greater facility is learning your different chords and their inversions like your C chord, first inversion, second inversion. And when we <clears throat> take the C chord, if we take the third and bring it up, an octave, we have our tenth. So what I did there is the C minor chord. So in this inversion, I know this is the major third. So there I have the second of the D chord. So we can do actually exercises to learn how to do these voicings and come up with some really interesting harmonies. And then once you have the harmonies, then you add a melody on top. And you can use, of course, different instruments. Like here we have the flute. So let's go back and hear the flute. So we have a lot of possibilities. Another thing you can do once you learn the chordal structures is you can effectively use the sixths. For example, so if I use the hand position of a six here, Again, 
that's just another technique to add more interest to the harmonies. And these techniques not only apply to strings, they apply to brass, they apply to woodwinds. They, of course, apply, apply to the piano, which is a, a good instrument to practice these voicings on as well as the uh, strings. The strings are great. Um, you can spend a lot of time just uh, enjoying the voicings and the strings and the variations that you come up with. So. This will be the uh, first part in string arranging and string voicing, as well as how to write with strings. And once we get the, the basic 10th uh, voicings, then we can apply that to all instrument groups. And this is actually how it would look in music, the same chords. We have the F, the G, the A minor, voiced in tenths, the A minor, the G over B, the C in tenths, the C again, the D minor, and so on in the uh, voicings that we used. So this is Bill McFadden from TonePure.com signing off.